Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh Ronnie, can oh. I get some sound effects, some ad libs? Oh my God. That looks <laughs> amazing. Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to a special episode of Fung Bros Food. We are here out in Soho at a very, very cool Chinese restaurant with a very, very cool Chinese guy. What's up? We got Ronnie Chang. Thanks guys, thanks for helping me improve my street cred. All right, all right. First of all, Ronnie, if you want to improve your street cred, do not do this. <laughs> that is okay, I, I got need, it, I got it. This I is need to do this. You right. gotta tell me the no, Chinese no, no, gang no, signs. No, I don't no, even know. No, gang, gang. Gang, gang, gang. Yeah. Okay. So today we are gonna be going into Pinch Chinese. We're gonna be making some Shaolong Bao's. Yeah. We're gonna be eating food, talking Asians. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, we are in the kitchen of Pinch Chinese here with Fred, aka Sai Hua. Ronnie Chang makes a Shaolong Bao. No, we do this every day at the Daily Show, oh, set, actually. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, lunch? Before Great. lunch, yeah, actually, I'm responsible for making lunch. And, and this is part of my daily routine, really. I mean, how's that, Sufu? Uh, <laughs> he said this was okay. okay. Let's, let's, right, let's. So he's wrapping up the dumpling right now. I haven't seen David concentrate like this in a long time. Oh! You know what? Long bao. That, that looks like someone ate so long bao and then threw it up. Okay, he said mine specifically is unacceptable. Yeah, he said yours didn't even close. The takeaway is how hard it is to make every single thing you see that comes on the table. We were briefly talking about how Shaolong Bao's have become almost like a part of popular culture. And just in general, there is a small wave of uh, Asian things happening in Western media. Yeah, that, I think that's fair to say. The Crazy Rich Asians is coming out. Live action Mulan is being made. There was that short film, Dom, Bao. By Domi Shu, by Domi Shu. I, I honestly just think that it's an age thing. It's people who are now in a position of decision making are younger people who have grown up with Asian culture. Our stories haven't been told, so it's untapped place for storytelling and so it's weird to not see Asian people if you go if you tell a story and this in America and you don't see Asian people it's like well all the Asians uh, everybody from the cast of crazy rich Asians everybody's getting a lot of interviews out there I can see that there is some misalignment or I guess misunderstanding who you guys are what you guys represent so I'm half Malaysian half British and Constance where are you from Richmond, Virginia. Uh, Richmond, Virginia? Mm -hmm. You got Jimmy Kimmel asking Aquafina a lot about China, which is like not really her thing. Where did you live? In Beijing. Oh, in Beijing. Yeah. What was that like? It was cool. Why yeah. were you there for a year? I, I just saw recently on Sway, and I love Sway. That gives us an interesting insight in the life and culture of um, I guess Chinese Americans, <laughs> right? I love it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah more like a uh, Chinese people from Asia. He didn't know if you were like representing Chinese Americans or Chinese from China or Asians from Asia, and you kind of corrected him. Let's just say Asian Americans. There's Asian American Taiwanese people, Asian American Korean people, Asian American Japanese people. And in, even in China, Chinese people, you have the Hokkien's, the Teochew's. It is extremely complicated, even with the best of intentions, even with bringing full knowledge to the situation is already quite complicated. You can't play the uh, Amer African American game because we're not that game. Well, well our game is different, our, our story is different. So we just have to be patient in explaining things and also quick to move on and not get lost in the weeds so we can talk about what we're here to really promote and uh, make some money. All right, so we're gonna go dig into the duck first. Here we got the pancakes. Yo, look at this duck, bro. Just, oh. I, I don't know what it is about this universal human thing of wrapping meat in in a wrap. Same, similar to the dumpling or the sandwich, I feel like people want to hold something together. I could tell that the duck they picked was very fatty. That peking dunk was hella good. You guys, I feel like we have to go for the Shaolong Bao's next. Oh my gosh to the Asian media wave. It's just a wave, may never end. So good, man. Oh, that's really good. Guys, I'm gonna do something really crazy. 
I'm gonna wrap a Shaolin Bao in a Peking duck skin, and I'm gonna roll this up, guys. All right, we're going in for the cumin ribs. Those look amazing, That's man. so tender. Like, this falls off the bone. Mm. Yo, you guys, we gotta try the bacon, egg, and cheese dumpling. This is so New York. Bacon, wow. egg, dumplings. What, that's a great idea. How, how can no one think of this? I would say it successfully tastes like bacon, eggs, and cheese. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For the Cantonese in us all, Lobaco. I, I want to address some of the criticism oh, of CRA. One, Henry, and Henry's a really great guy. We met him, super humble, nice guy. He identifies more with his Asian side, but aesthetically, he doesn't necessarily look more Asian than white. He's more Malaysian than most Malaysians. He's Aboriginal or on Asli. When we, when we go to Malaysia, he's eating at the roadside, man. He's talking to the people. Because people need to see the movie before they like, yeah, you, I think you do. So. Oh, yeah, oh. Uh, oh Ronnie, can no. I get some sound effects, some ad-libs? Oh my God, that looks <laughs> amazing. My Vietnamese friends or my Cambodian friends, right, are watching this movie and I think they generally support it, but they're also like, yeah, it's not like at all talking about our story or people from our country, Vietnam and Cambodia. It's a very, it's a story about a very specific family in Singapore, you know? So I don't know what would have been better. Don't call it Crazy Rich Asians. If we call it Crazy Rich Chinese Singaporeans, would that have made everyone a little, you know, the fact that it's called Asians is making everyone, you know, yeah. a little angsty, but. It might not be the exact progress that you want, but it's absolutely progress. It is, and can you imagine trying to create a story that addresses every single one of those issues that you just described. So it needs to represent a lot of Asian, Filipino, Aboriginal, Indians, and be rich, show people in position of power, but also show the mundane realities of day-to-day -day life and the authenticity of Asian Americans in New York City and Houston, in LA, and the Hmong people. Why don't you write that story? And you know, let's and then let's let's see how that story goes. I really want. To... It always seems like it's got to be Chinese, and it always seems like it's got to be rich. You really? Said, I mean, I mean, I mean, Joy Luck Club wasn't about that, you know. It was about poor Chinese people. Yeah, about poor Chinese people. Ronnie, you're so against trolly Asian Americans. You dude, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just against, <laughs> dude, no, I'm just against trolly people. That. Because my, my point is like, don't waste your time complaining about something. If you don't like something, go make something better. Leaving a comment is not creating it. Okay. <laughs> we, all right, we have round two coming, but we also have another special guest. Introducing David. Victoria Loke. Glorious, glorious. Yeah. Hi, I'm Victoria Loke. I am Fiona Chang. Ronnie's on screen wife. So at NYU, I developed my own major because I went to the School of Individualized Study and I wrote a thesis on cognitive decoloniality, which is using cognitive neuroscience and contemporary philosophical discourse um, applied to analyzing the project of decolonization, both in terms of culture and the individual. White people in Asia is what she did her. Yeah, pretty much. Like white people in Asia, whack, you know. She was whack. Uh, some whack. Yeah, yeah on she, some whack. She was talking you know. about the colonialism in Southeast Asia. Exactly. I can tell that the conversation has just switched up since, <laughs> since uh, Victoria being here. She came in here with the sunglasses and just dropped knowledge bombs. Listen, born and raised, born and raised Singapore. You're a fop. Yeah, I'm a fop. I'm a mad fop. I'm less foppy than him here because like he's only here three years. I lived here five years. I went to the shittiest schools in Singapore, so I'm I'm kind of right, saying as Japan. a Malaysian, that's what you get put into. <laughs> you get put into the worst Singapore right. schools. I got put into the worst Singapore schools. She went to literally the best Singapore schools. So, so instead of okay la, is it like uh, okay la? <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like my classmates sound like that. My classmates really do sound like that. As we divvy up this food and we have uh, Dan Win chicken. Obviously, Siji Dao, Seigwai Dao, your classic. Uh, this is the classic Chinese dinner meal. Maybe the best best way to eat green beans in Ever. the entire world. Yo, just looking at this makes me feel happy. Well, well crab noodles is also very Singaporean to go. Okay, not everything is Singaporean, Ronnie. Oh my God. I play Edison Cheng in the movie. Um, he is. And this not is not, not at all Edison based Chen. off Edison Cheng. <laughs> Edison Chen. Oh my God, Hong Kong. I wish. I think like what people really liked about um, our dynamic was that how my character is just like so over his. Like so over anything that her husband is doing. And like, my, she's not gonna like this, but I kind of base that off my mom. <laughs> <laughs> my mom has the best looks of like derision and contempt for the people around her that she doesn't notice. But like she does it subtly here and there, and I like picked up on that, and kind of you know, it came very naturally to me too. We have really good rapport right from the start, and I mean, look, we're you know we're not 
exactly the main characters in the thing. So, so we were making up backstories for scenes and like lines. You know, our couple's dynamic is very similar to a lot of Chinese couples' dynamic. Like our old aunties and uncles, you know, they're like yelling at each other and bickering, but they actually do love each other. Yeah. It's just the way they communicate. So there was some kind of creating or improv involved in this, it yeah. sounds like. We came up with a lot of stuff that made it into the movie that wasn't on the page, you know. A lot of lines, a lot of little like major jokes where just before the scene happens, I, I tell Fiona like, hey, let's do it this way. Let's do it where I, um, you come in and you're about to introduce yourself, I just cut you off, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Like, right, stuff that wasn't written in, right, right, right. but it made it in. Right, and because yeah. she, she wasn't given a lot to work with either, so it's just like, okay, how, 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 how do we stick to the script but still really add, add to it? Do you feel pressure? to almost be more Asian or represent Asians more in your career moving forward or what you, things you say? The, the answer to your question is, um, so f your YouTube comments. And um, <laughs> it's I, I felt, I kind of been in that uh, place for a while now and I have my own internal pressures of my own standards that I put pressure on myself to do, you know, to, to be at, to present stories in a certain way, to tell, uh, to tell this type of story in this way is my own pressure that I put on myself. I'm very happy to get this platform to keep on doing it, you know. So for myself, I feel that this is very in line with what I've done anyway, like I've always been very well researched and very involved in, this, in these things and so for me speaking about it comes a bit naturally but then I also feel that it's unfair to make like people like Ken, you know, you don't see people expecting one white person to represent all like all of white people and like I think you know some people choose to um, take on the role of speaking about these things and some people choose not to and I think we should respect that. Is your guys' favorite scene one that you're in? I think the, the one that we're in I think is probably my favorite scene. Yeah, you know? yeah. I really like it. Because it opens it was, with us and it's just silly. Yeah, and, and, and we have our three children sitting there who look so cute on, on the oh, screen and I, I, it was a nightmare to shoot that because it was a single shot. Yeah it was also the first thing we the shot. The first time we, like, the first yeah. thing we shot together. Name a story each specifically that you'd like to see get made since this is gonna like break the door open a little bit. Didn't you say Wendy? Wendy Day. Yeah, you show, it's your oh, dream story. Oh, that's a good ass yeah, one. Yeah. You're trying to play Wendy Day. Yeah, yeah. Yo, I want her to crazy. give me lessons. I want to learn how to get a hit in life courtesy of Wendy Day. Yeah. Yo, and she's classic, crazy. classic. Uh, I don't want to say stereotype of a dragon lady, but kind of. She's, she's gonna take over the world, you know. Like, that I is one of the archetypes of a Chinese girl. I would I, say. <laughs> she <laughs> does it to like with such finesse. Yeah. <laughs> she, such a, she, no, she should have a movie about her for sure. Oh, she yeah. finessed oh the world. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. She, <laughs> she finessed, finessed the, the world. world. I love to see the story of the young Asian superhero who happens to be part of the Avengers, so that he can be in the next tier of Marvel movies. Yeah, so I got a TV show, Ryan Chan, International Student. Uh, it's a sitcom uh, coming out on Comedy Central uh, August 13th. So watch it on the channel and on the app. Or you know what, what the hell, just pirate it. Just watch it, however you want to do it. Uh, also, I'm doing a stand-up tour. Uh, around America, so check RyanChang.com for my tour dates. And I will be probably back and forth here, between here and Asia a lot more now because I have representation here. So I'm hoping to have more projects soon that I can show you guys. Yo, you guys, thank you so much for doing this. Go out and watch Crazy Rich Asians. It has currently 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Which is uh, not easy to do, yeah. Right. Because everybody hates everything these days, so yeah. 100%. Can't All ask right. for more than that for Asian project. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan Chang, Victoria Loke. Until next time, we're at Pinch Chinese. We out. Peace. Okay, so we are here with Sean Tang, the owner of Pinch Chinese. The idea behind the restaurant was taking food that you know I I grew up eating with my family, or the chef grew up eating with his family, and kind of you know bringing that to New York. The more Chinese restaurants, the more people go to Chinese restaurants. The more people get a taste of our of our culture and really start to understand where we're coming from and what we're trying to bring to the table. I, I really think this is a good time to be a Chinese American because, uh, movie aside, the fact that China's opening up is great because more and more people travel there.